Friday night I had a Native, Native American uh, uh, hoodie on that was just as bright as you could possibly <laughs> see. And uh, I, I kidded all my friends in Freedom Friday that growing up with Native American uh, tribe, uh, I may look white, but I'm half Native American. <laughs> but uh, spiritually, I've been greatly influenced by Native American spirituality, but I, I need to tell you, I've been greatly influenced by wonderful people like Mahatma Gandhi, Ralph Waldo Emerson, Martin Luther King, would you believe Marcus Aurelius, an ancient writer, Paul of Tarsus, there's many, many different spiritual linkages you and I have. Some of them we don't even know people are influencing us. Uh, here's, here's one for you. Uh, the spirit of Jesse Hobbs in this church. The, the men and women who long before Jesse prayed in this sanctuary and built it after the fire. There's just all kinds of spiritual currents in all of our lives. And I just want to uh, emphasize again to, in this series of sermons, uh, Native American visions and Jesus visions. I'll start off with some of the visions around Jesus' life. Mary, his mother, vision of the angels. The wise men, a vision from them. Uh, and they followed the vision. Uh, a vision of the shepherds with the angels singing praises to God. And they obeyed their vision. I'm having a lot of my patients in my clinic have, have significant dreams. And I would ask you, where does your dreams end and the Holy Spirit begin. Where does your subconscious that had that dream begin? And, and where is the Holy Spirit in all this? A friend of mine went to her medical doctor this last week. And she said, I think I have this con medical condition, doctor. And her doctor said to her, well, I've known you all my life. I want you to continue to trust your instincts because you actually do have this medical condition. And, and I say that to a lot of Christians too. Trust your spiritual instincts. If you're walking down a sidewalk or driving in a car and you feel the need to pray about something, pray right then. And if you're driving a car, keep your eyes open. <laughs> But pray right then. Trust your spiritual instincts. Uh, we were talking about Mary, Queen of Scots, today in, in Sunday school class. And uh, she was going to cause tremendous spiritual upheaval in Great Britain. And John Knox, a great Christian leader, was walking in his garden. And he was praying for the spiritual well-being of Great Britain. And he said, all of a sudden, he felt this tremendous spiritual burden lift. He was trusting his spiritual instincts. At that ex same, at the exact same moment, Mary, Queen of Scots, died. And all that spiritual problems that were going to happen never happened in Great Britain. So really trust your spiritual Instincts, I personally think that every one of you have been given visions, except generally what we do is we just sort of blow them off and say, well, that was a weird dream, or, or I wonder why I was thinking that, and we don't realize many times it's the Holy Spirit speaking to us. What I'm telling you is, you are Mary. You are the shepherds. You are the wise men. You are Joseph who listened to the angel. So when we talk about Native American visions I, I want, and Jesus' visions, I want you to realize that you're a spiritual creature too. As a matter of fact, 
These bodies are just temporary. Our spirits continue to live forever. And so in this lifetime, when we give given this privilege of having a body, use your instincts. And it's just not all physical instincts. There's a lot of spiritual instincts. So there, I used to have a real funny feeling between Ottawa, Kansas and Lawrence, Kansas on Highway 59. And I got to this one place and the, the woods over to the left felt real creepy. I could feel something was bad there. And a friend of mine was driving with me coming up that same road the other day and I said, these woods have always felt creepy to me. And he said, well, you know, when I was going to Baker University, there was a terrible bar there. A lot of people had problems right in that area. My spiritual instincts could feel that terrible bar even though I had no idea. The bar doesn't even exist now. It's just oak trees. But I could feel it there. And he said, you know, your instincts are right. Bad things happen in that bar. And he began to describe them. The kind of stuff you can't describe in worship services. But definitely be a fully developed Christian. Let me encourage you to ask God to give you visions. Ask God to give you dreams. Uh, one of my favorite visions is Peter. Peter was not associating with people who were following Jesus, but who were Greeks and Romans. He, he thought they were unclean. And he had this vision three times. When the, in the vision, he was told, you can eat anything you want to. You don't have to eat kosher food anymore. And then there was a knock on his door. It was the servants of Cornelius. Cornelius had had a vision to send his servants to Peter's house. Peter came down and Cornelius became a Christian and all his household. And Cornelius was a Roman soldier. He was not uh, a Jew. And Peter says, I'm understanding now that people that aren't Jewish can be followers of Jesus too. You and I are the result of the vision that Cornelius had and the vision that Peter had. One of my wonderful New Testament visions is Jesus was murdered on the cross. Two of his followers were walking from Jerusalem to Emmaus. And this man came along and he said, what were you talking about? And they began to tell him about Jesus and they thought he was the Messiah, but he'd been murdered on the cross. And this man began to describe them it's the scriptures which prove that Jesus was the Messiah. And then they came to the village of Emmaus and they said, why don't you eat dinner with us? And as the man took the bread and blessed it, he disappeared and they realized they had been talking to Jesus. These two men had a vision of Jesus and they ran back to Jerusalem and told the 12 apostles what had happened. I do not take lightly Native American visions and Native American dreams either. Uh, as white people were starting to come into Kansas and Nebraska and, and Oklahoma, the buffalo herds were going away. And two Native Americans were out walking one day and this lady they came to call white buffalo calf woman appeared to them. And she basically said this. I'll, I'll make it real short. She said, when a white buffalo calf is born, Native American values will come back to this country. And I remember, I had read that book, and I remember when the first white buffalo calf was born. I think it was up in Wisconsin. And every Native American in this country became awake. And people like me became awake. There had not been a white buffalo calf born 
for dozens and dozens and dozens of years. I don't know if you've been following it or not. Several white buffalo calves have been born recently. And maybe this worship message about Jesus' visions and Native American visions is a part of that prophecy coming true. Uh, a lot of the Native American values are, are very good, healthy, wonderful spiritual values. Native Americans would regularly go on vision quests. I, I shared a vision quest that I had a, a, f a few Sundays ago. Uh, they would get on a high mountain or the edge of a cliff and they'd ask God to speak to them. And many times they'd have a spiritual experience. I, th I think it's really important that you and I, maybe as Christians, we should think about doing this too. In Kansas, we're going to have to get on a high river bank <laughs> or a high river hill. There's a great one uh, up on Tri Corners right up by White Cloud. It'd be a good place for Vision Quest. But ask God to speak to us, to guide our lives. You know, Mission Hills Christian, Mission Lake Christian Camp, those hills by the Mission Lake, many young people have found Jesus there with a, with a spiritual experience on those beautiful rolling hills around Mission Lake. Uh, we know that we have guardian spirits, uh, but we never ask to see them. I think many people are afraid, and, and they never ask to see their guardian spirits. Many people do not listen to their dreams. When I became a Christian, the first thing I did was starting to keep a spiritual journey. And uh, write down my dreams, write down scripture verses that have meaning to me. When a pastor or a Sunday school teacher or something said something that spoke to me, I wrote it down. So I had this real vivid dream one time. And I wrote it down. And about a year later, I said, God, I'd like you to show me my guardian angels. And the still small voice of God said, I already have. I went back and looked at my journal. Sure enough, I gave real detailed descriptions in my journal. God had already done that. And let me encourage you to keep a spiritual journal. My patients that keep a spiritual journal and a recovery journal, they get better faster. They get in touch with themselves. And they get in touch with God. Um, I think I've already mentioned to you uh, about walking down the creek and feeling something behind me. And it was a mountain lion following me and my dog. I could feel them there. Again, trust your instincts. One time I was in a really dangerous place in El Paso right near the Mexican border. And all of a sudden, I felt like my life was in danger, and I started running. There's a gang of guys. If I hadn't trusted my instincts, trust your instincts. Uh, God can speak to you then. Many times, we just, we're not in touch with the spiritual world. I would encourage you, pray every day, all the time, and get a linkage of your life with God. You know, what we're talking about here, many people, Jesus' visions and Peter's visions and things like this, many people say, oh, well, that's ancient history. That doesn't happen today. I, I want to tell you that every single thing that's in the Bible is happening today. And it's just amazing. Uh, I'm, a little later in the worship service, I'm going to tell you a wonderful story uh, Two church leaders showed up at the same place where I was on a mission that they didn't know they were on and I didn't know I was on. But I realized, oh, that's why they're here. That happened yesterday. 
And uh, that was a lot of fun. It was fun to be awake spiritually and see it happen. Two leaders from this church. Uh, I, I believe I've shared this before, but I want to share it again. I, I was sitting on a ridge in my, our family ranch. I could always feel this presence of God there. I could feel the presence of my grandfather, Cobb, too, and I, I couldn't figure it out. Why is Grandpa Cobb here with me? He's gone on to be with the Lord. When I was buying that ranch, I made down payment on the ranch. I was paying on it. I had to pay for quite a few years. And my aunt in Wyoming, after a year, she wrote me a letter. Did you know your Grandpa Cobb farmed in Kansas before he moved to Wyoming? And I said, yes, I did, but I don't know what part of Kansas. He farmed two miles south and one mile east of Blue Mountain, Kansas. Our ranch is eight miles south and two miles east of Blue Mountain, Kansas. I could feel his spirit. I, I know that you have things like this happen to you too, but I, I want to encourage you to become awake. Every day, ask for the Holy Spirit to guide you. So I'm sitting on this bluff, looking down on this valley. It's fall, all the trees are turning, the sun's going down, it's absolutely breathtakingly beautiful. After about 15 minutes, all of a sudden, a Native American spirit sat next to me. And I knew he wasn't there to harm me. And uh, finally, in my spirit, I said, what are you doing here? He said, oh, this is a beautiful place. I have been here many times before. Well, the sun kept going down more, and I kept getting a little more creepy. <laughs> so I went down over the oak forest to the nearest cabin. These people had lived in the Little Osage River Valley since before the Civil War, their family. And I told him what had happened, and he's, his name was Scott Northway. Scott said, well, Ronnie, in southeast Kansas, if you have a name, there's going to be an IE on the end of it. Ronnie, I used to sit right where you were sitting. I found Indian arrowheads there. I had to watch my dad's cattle. There were no barbed wire fences. And you know that meadow you were looking down on? You notice how warm it is in the winter? That's where the Native Americans camped in the wintertime. Oh, and that line of oak trees that goes up the ridge in a straight line in the middle of your tall grass prairie? That's the old Indian trail before the white man ever came here. But I had a wonderful Christian experience at the ranch, too. And again, the reason I bought that place is when I walked it, I could feel the presence of God. There was an old house that had long ago crumbled, but their well was still up high in the northwest corner of the ranch. And that well is a spring that feeds my farm pond. And uh, I'd heard about a man named Elder Dismang. He had founded two Christian churches in Missouri, and then he moved to Kansas. And right near where I live, he founded two other Christian churches. And I was down in my mailbox one day, and this elderly man, gray hair, tall, distinguished, white hair, he said, have you ever heard of Elder Dismang? I said, yes, I have. He's a wonderful Christian man. He said, I grew up on your ranch. He said, do you know where the well is? I said, yes. Do you know where the foundations of our house is? I said, yes, I do. He said, my dad was killed in a railroad accident, and my grandpa, Elder Dismang, used to come and visit us, and he really was a father figure to me and a wonderful man. So here was Elder Dismang's grandson. I used to take a lot of church kids down there camping out. And one time they were camping out and playing hide and go seek. 
And uh, my son came and told me this story. Dad, I was playing hide and go seek. And this old man, he had leather clothes on. He had a leather carrying case. And he came over to me and said, hey, how are you doing? Are you having fun here? And then I asked the other kids if they'd ever seen him. They never saw him. We looked everywhere. We couldn't find this old man in that leather clothes and the leather carrying case. God sent Elder Dismank to bless my son. Uh, there's a whole world out there of blessings for you. It's just all, all Native American blessings. Uh, when we bought the ranch 55 years ago, I stood underneath an oak tree and I said, Dear God, bless this place. Help people to come to Jesus Christ at this place. And uh, please uh, bless my children and grandchildren. And help them to love this place. So when I was in Eagle Base, 8,000 miles away, my son texted me and he said, Dad, I'd like to build a cabin at the ranch. And I said, well, David, I was fought forest fires for four years, and I'm not going to get you a wood cabin. <laughs> You're going to get a steel cabin that won't burn down. From Eagle Base, in an Islamic country, I ordered a steel cabin, which they brought and, and to the ranch, and David built the cabin right exactly under the same oak tree where I had stood and asked God to bless my children and grandchildren uh, in that place. None of that's by chance. A few months ago, I mentioned how a friend of mine had a vision of a lady, a blonde-haired lady, in the home where we live now, where our kitchen's all tore up. <laughs> and he said, I saw somebody in your kitchen. Well, we, we had been in Colorado, and he was watching the cattle for us. And I said, well, nobody was home. He says, I know that, but I saw somebody in your kitchen. Is a blonde-haired lady, and she was real smiling and looked real friendly. And so that got me... So I began to do historical research on the house. A German family, the Butchlers, built that house in 1900, in the barn in 1900. And in the 30s, they had lost their finances and had to sell the place and moved, moved to California. But one of their sons stayed in Holton. And his daughter, a granddaughter of the Butchlers, just retired from teaching in Holton Grade School. And I contacted her. She said, oh yeah, the Butchers were all blonde haired. <laughs> uh, there's all kinds of wonderful spiritual things out there that will help you as a follower of Jesus Christ. Some of them may be Native American. And There's something that's really happening here in this congregation, too. Uh, the spirits of godly people who built this building, who have gone on to be with the Lord, are here with us. And the Bible says very clearly we should not try to contact the dead, and I never do that. It's against the Hebrew scriptures and the Christian scriptures. But that doesn't mean that they don't come to you in dreams and they don't come to you in visions. And just the spiritual atmosphere that these people have created in this place is making a tremendous difference in your life and my life spiritually. The last vision I'd like us to think about today is not on your handout. It's the vision of Jesus in Luke 24. When you get home, 
After church today, look up Luke 24 and read about what I'm going to describe. At the very end of his ministry, Jesus took them to a hill and he raised his hands to bless them. And as Jesus blessed his followers, these are more than his disciples, he was taken up into heaven blessing them. And that is a vision I hope you carry with you all the days of your life. The last thing Jesus did before he ascended into heaven is called the, the ascension of Jesus. Is he raised his hands and blessed not only the people that were there, he raised his hands and blessed you and me. The men and women who have led us to Jesus throughout the centuries, that blessing was for you too. Every time you receive communion, I hope you have a vision of Jesus raising his hands and blessing you personally. This is not ancient history. And every time you receive communion, as the bread touches your lips, as the juice touches your lips, ask to be filled with the Holy Spirit. I was going to share something with you a little bit later, the timing. God's timing is just absolutely incredible. And when you keep having things happen over and over again, the right person, at the right time, at the right place, there's no such thing as the word luck for Christians. I've had a lot of things I can't talk about because of confidentiality that have happened in this church with just the absolute right time. It's, it's just been absolutely amazing to me. So I hope you all keep the spiritual journal. Write down your spiritual thoughts. Write down your dreams, even if the dreams are a little strange. My strangest dream turned out to be my greatest spiritual blessing. And I didn't know it was a spiritual dream. It was just a strange dream, and I wrote it down. It was a life-changing dream and vision for me. And I know I'm no better than the rest of you. If you halfway reach up your hand to God, God will always more than halfway reach down a hand of love to you.